All right, party people. So today we are gonna be building one of the coolest AR-15s that I've ever built before. It's also probably gonna be one of the more expensive guns that I've ever built before. I won't say it's the most because I haven't added up all the prices of everything from the past. However, this is a very nice build and this build is gonna be part of a giveaway which I'll get into more detail about here in a little bit. Now, for those of you who don't know, it's been against the rules to show tutorials on how to build and modify firearms on YouTube since 2018. And that sucks because that's how I built this channel prior to those rules coming into effect. But I decided to create a course about this on Teachable and then back in March and we did a pre-sale on it. A bunch of people bought it and then all of a sudden Teachable decided they don't wanna be a part of it. So they refunded everyone their money and then I created my own course on my own platform that I get to control. And so I decided I wanted to create a course for AR-15s and other types of rifles as well as of course for striker fired handguns and glocks and things like that i'm currently doing the recording right now the courses aren't available for viewing yet but they are available for pre-sale at 30 percent off there's a link in the description with more information about that but i wanted to have a place where people could always have access to this type of content instead of worrying about this platform taking it down or this platform can't financially sustain so then they lose your content and i just wanted my own thing and so that's why i created it in addition to that i created a 1 million subscriber giveaway there'll be a link in the description for that when we hit a million subscribers we're gonna be drawing some winners I think first place prize is a $5,000 gift card to Brownells second place price is gonna be what we're building today third place is gonna be another thing that I build and then there's gonna be more. I don't wanna go into too much detail because it's YouTube, but if you follow the link in the description, it'll take you and you can see a full list of the prizes, but those prizes aren't set in stone, meaning I will probably add more prizes as we get closer to the 1 million subscribers. With that said, the gun we're building today is a gun that I've never fired before. I've fired some of their parts on other guns, but it's a new company that I've learned about and they're actually very local to me and, and they make some very high-end things. And I actually have another gun that we're gonna review in the future that has some space age stuff happening with it that is from the same company. But I wanted to do a cool giveaway, something that was beyond standard mill spec, something that wasn't just pretty to look at, but something that was very functional and accurate and fast. And so that's the point of this build. Also, during the building of this gun, I'm filming the actual process of it for the course itself. So everything that you're seeing in today's video in regards to the parts, that's all part of the instructional series on the course that we're putting together. So let's check it out real quick, and then I'll show you what the gun looks like when when it's all completed. We'll give a big shout out to Blackout Defense for donating a lot of the parts. And I wanna give a big shout out to Big Daddy Unlimited for donating the rest of the parts. If you wanna know more about them, follow the link below in the description. You can get a lot more information about what the pricing and stuff is on here. So number one, they donated this guy here. This is the Blackout Defense receiver set with handguard. This is a very, very nice receiver set. Uh, there is a lot going on with it. It does come with the takedown pins pre-installed, at least as far as I know, at least this one did, and they are very tight. You will notice that between this upper receiver and this lower receiver, there is zero play in there. In addition to that, in this little white box right here, there's a lot of bunch of different parts. And this is a really cool thing about blackout receiver sets. This doesn't work on all receiver sets, so just an FYI. But let's just pretend there was a little bit of play in your receiver group and you wanted to kind of eliminate that play. They get these little rubber grommets. These things, they, they include about five or six of these and they have replacements on their website. But essentially it squeezes down into here. They machined out this little slot right here and so they'll fit down into there. Then when you put your upper on, you get an even tighter fit. Most of the time you won't even need those from what I understand. Another interesting feature about this is it comes with the threaded bolt catch bolt release pin. Instead of having to hammer it in, it's just a threading. So that's really nice. And it's CNC'd and it looks dead sexy. I will be testing this before we do the giveaway because obviously you gotta test the gun. Make sure everything works correctly. The parts bin also includes some thread locker, and it includes your dust cover, which you have to install and fit yourself, which I go over in the course, and then your pieces for installing the handguard. Speaking of the handguard, it does come with these nice little self-centering locking bolts for this handguard system. I like these especially because they're made out of a high-grade steel and they can handle a lot of torque. This is the handguard. 
like it a lot. A couple things I like about this. Sometimes when companies wanna make their handguards really lightweight, they'll scallop out the center of these slots right here, or they will forego the slots and just make it a lot narrow in here and add a little bit of Picatinny here and then have a little bit back up here. And then they will take all this out. But they were able to retain those as well as making it extremely lightweight by milling out a lot of the material at the top. This is a very, very lightweight. The other cool thing about their receiver set, they come with a really nice barrel nut tool that is reusable. A lot of the barrel nut tools that come with a lot of your uppers and handguards are only a one-time use. This is multiple use. And here is your barrel nut here. So here, Blackout Defense also included their barrel. This is a very nice barrel. It's in 223 Wild. It is a 416R stainless steel but it's still black. As you can see, they made it black. Um, this one is the one in eight twist rate. It is chambered in 223 wild, meaning you can shoot both 223 and 556 through this barrel. Now, once I actually get into the testing of everything, once it's all completed, we're gonna go over all the specs about this barrel and what makes it special because they do put a lot of work and a lot of pride and joy into their barrels and all the parts that Blackout Defense makes. You know, I did a tour of their facility. And I've toured quite a few facilities in the past that make AR-15s, but the space age equipment that they have, like it literally looks like a NASA warehouse. Like it's crazy, like the machines that they have. But I'm very excited to check out this barrel. You know, with 416R stainless steel, if you watched my barrel video that I made where I compared a bunch of different types of barrels, I'll link it down below. It's about an hour long, but one of the positives to stainless steel barrels is they're the most accurate barrels. The downside to these types of barrels, they usually only last about five or 6,000 rounds. And then those sub MOA groups open up dramatically to about you know two to four MOA. And these last quite a bit longer before they open up. I will have more information about how long that is once I go into the full review of this gun, but very excited to test out this barrel. They also included a buffer spring and they included their own bolt carrier group. They do take a lot of pride in their bolt carrier groups. This one is a nitrided finish. It is Carpenter 158 tool steel and grade eight fasteners properly staked. They also included this amazing ambidextrous charging handle. Uh, I like ambi charging handles, but something you might that might stick out to you like a sore thumb is look how giant these roll pins are for this uh, charging handle. Most don't make them that large. And this is a common failing point with their with most charging handles is these pins will break. Also, they, did, they cut it very deep right here so that we can eliminate gas blowback into the face. Did a really good job on that. But you know, all this stuff's theoretical until we actually test it. And last but not least from Blackout Defense, they donated two of their triggers. One of them is a flat trigger, which is the one that's gonna go in the build. Another one is a slightly curved trigger, which is one that I'm gonna be testing so I can put a lot of rounds through it. And this is called their Zero Trigger and they take a lot of pride into these. I have fired these triggers before and my buddy Mike's gun from Tactical Considerations as well as Mr. Big Kid, he has one of these and it's an insanely fast trigger. It's not a force reset or anything, but it is an insanely fast trigger. One of the tightest triggers in a good way that I've ever tested. You can get these in a couple different setups. They got three pounds or you can get one in four and a half pounds. You can also get the black nitride coating on the trigger or you can get it MP3 coated. It's all up to you and that kind of changes the price. But these average around 200-ish dollars depending on which model and setup that you get. So thank you. Now I wanted to move on to the other parts that I had sent to me for this build series. So first off, we're gonna get the BCM stock system right here. Uh, it does come with a buffer spring and buffer, but we're probably not gonna need that. But I really enjoy the BCM stock. This is my BCM Ricky 14. I like that it's super easy to grab. There's zero wobble in it and it's extremely nice. So I wanted to have this on this build as well. I also got the BCM gunfighter in plate. I like it because it has a QD point on it for a sling. Also got the BCM. It's kind of like a lower parts kit. I'm just not gonna be able to use this trigger. I will, it's just a mil spec trigger and we're not gonna be able to use the trigger guard, but we will be able to use all these little pieces here for the lower parts. For the foregrip, we got the BCM Mod 3 vertical foregrip. This is the short version that's compatible with M-Lock. And then we got the Radian 4590 ambidextrous safety. I love these to death. I don't know what color this is. I thought I got it in black, but let's see. It doesn't look black to me. Oh, it's actually an FDE. 
That'll be kind of interesting. If it looks ugly, I'll order a black one and put it on there, but I think it's gonna look kind of cool. Then for sights, I got these Ultradyne C4 sight system. These are very expensive sights. Uh, so a big shout out to Ultradyne for sending those out. Then we got the Romeo, the Six Hour Romeo 4H. I did a review of this a few years ago. Actually, I think I, rem I reviewed the 4C, but the 4H is a very nice red dot. It's just something that's really quick, really fast, it has a QD mount on it. And so I'm very excited to use this in the build as well. So now I'm gonna jump to where the gun is actually completed. I got it completely finished and there is a few pieces on here that we're gonna go over because there are some new pieces on here that I didn't show you earlier because I just now got the pieces. Number one, when I was filming the build for the course, I made a big rookie mistake. But at the same time, it's not that big of a mistake because usually I don't install these. They usually come pre-installed. I forgot to install the dust cover. And the way that this particular gun is designed, you have to install the dust cover before you even install the barrel nut because the barrel nut is blocking this hole from this side, but that's okay. You know, the dust cover that comes with it was a mil spec. So I ordered a black billet dust cover that installs without having to take the handguard and stuff off. That'll be here shortly. So I'll make sure that that gets rectified. I also added some other goodies onto the front of it up here. Uh, this little, piece of fabric here, it looks like a sock. Essentially, you can put a pressure pad in here for a light and you can mount your light up here and then bang, bang, now you got your pressure pad. Behind the pressure pad are these rail covers that I got from Strike Industries and they double as a way to organize your cording for your light. So if the winner of the giveaway chooses to put a light on the gun, they got all everything they need for the pressure pad and organizing their cording. On the front up here, one of the things I didn't show you was we got the Blackout Defense muzzle brake on here. Now, muzzle brakes are awesome. They make a gun shoot incredibly flat. The downside is because of these giant ports on the side, you get a lot of concussive forces going out to the side. And that poses a problem when you're taking a course or a class and, you got, and you're on the firing line with a bunch of other guys. It's really distracting and annoying to get hit with concussive forces. Or if you're at an indoor range, you don't wanna get all those concussive forces hitting towards the people beside you. So I added this Strike Industries Universal Blast Forwarding Device. It uses this key lock that goes on before the muzzle brake, and it simply has these lugs, you press in, you turn it, and now it directs all of your blast going down range. Another piece that I swapped out was the safety mechanism. I was speaking with the owner of Blackout Defense and he asked me what safety I was using. I told him I was gonna use the Radian. And he said, this doesn't always occur. He goes, maybe one in a hundred times, he said, the Radian won't work with his trigger. He did tell me this though. He said, however, any trigger that anyone buys now won't have any conflicts with Radian, but I got this trigger like a couple of months ago. And so he said it might. I wasn't really worried about swapping out the safety, but because the safety came in flat dark earth and I didn't have any other flat dark earth par parts to kind of tie it together, I said, cool, let's do that. And this one is a 4590 and it is very nice. And I like this just as much as the Radian. Very clicky and tactile, but the most important feature for a safety for me, if it's gonna be ambi, is I need to be able to defeat the safety while I pull the trigger simultaneously. Speaking of the trigger, again, this is the three pound single stage trigger. Check this out. Okay, zero movement. And if you, if you don't watch this carefully, if you blink, you might miss it. Here's the brake. Here's the brake. Beautiful. Here's the reset. Now don't blink or you might miss it. That's crazy. Like I said, I have tested this trigger in the past at a range uh, with my buddies. They both have one of these triggers and I need to put some more trigger time behind it. But this is quickly becoming one of my favorite triggers that I've ever tried on an AR-15. Now I haven't tried them all, but I'm just saying of the ones I've tried, this is quickly rising to the top, but I still need to get more range time with it. Let's do a trigger pull weight test. That one pulled just a hair over three pounds, like 3.4, but again, this trigger's not broken in. I'm pretty sure once we get it broken in, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put 100 rounds through this gun, you know, just to make sure everything is safe. If there's any issues or anything I have to fix, I will put more rounds through it until everything is perfect, but I gotta hold this because it wobbles, so let's see. 
Yeah, that one pulled close to 3.5. I have a feeling that'll settle down to three pounds once we get it broken in. I, I wanted to make a little bit of a comparison of this guy in regards to the set screws that are on the hand guards. So if you remember in last week's video where I had a verbal typo, in last week's video, I did a review on the Geisley Super Duty rifle and I, and I absolutely love this rifle. Now, one of the benefits that I loved about this was the hand guard and these huge bolts here. And in the video, my verbal typo was, I said that you torque these down to 50 foot pounds. That's not true. I put an annotation at the top of the screen to, to put the correction and I also pinned a comment to make the correction, but I don't know if everybody saw that. So I wanted to bring that up now. They're actually six foot pounds. The reason I said 50 was I was thinking in terms of barrel nut because this is what I was looking at right here where the barrel nut is and my brain just slipped and I said 50. But anyways, these are torqued down to six foot pounds, which is quite a bit because most handguard systems are torqued down in inch pounds, not foot pounds. When I asked the owners of Blackout Defense what the torque specs was on theirs, they told me 130 inch pounds, which comes out to 8.125 pounds. So two pounds more than the Geisley. I thought that was fascinating, but like I said, we're gonna go do some testing on it and verify you know, that everything works correctly. Now, although I haven't shot this yet, I can tell you this, in the hand, and the way that it feels, you know, to come from low ready and high ready. Now this little piece adds a little bit of weight to the front, but when you don't have that on there, you know, coming from like low ready to firing is so fast. I like that a lot. Or coming from high ready, you can defeat the safety, pull the trigger at the very same time. The trigger feels amazing like you saw it up close. I'm really excited to go test this. Now my goal in testing this is not to put so many rounds through it like I'm doing a review. You know, for typically for ARs, depending on ammo prices, I try to put at least five to 600 rounds through a gun before I even make a video about how it functions. I, w I used to do a lot more, but you know, ammo prices. If there are issues that I run into, like cycling issues, which I don't think we will, but you know, if there was, then I'm gonna put more rounds through it just to ensure that everything is copacetic. It feels very close to my BCM Recce 14 that I absolutely love. It's tied with, a couple, with one other gun as my top favorite AR-15s of all time. And this feels very similar. And the only reason I haven't said that this is one of my top favorites is because I haven't shot it yet. So let's talk about what the build experience was like on this guy. I mean, I can't show you the steps in building it here on YouTube, but I can talk about the experience because I built, hang on, let me count. Never mind, I'm not gonna count. Um, I probably built a little over a dozen or so rifles over the past you know, few years, probably more than that. And then like probably more than a dozen various Glock type builds in a 2011 and a 1911 and things like that. Now, usually when you're doing a build, when you choose to do your own barrels installs, that's the most difficult part. Because one, you need a secure mounting location and you need a good barrel nut. And as I showed you in the unboxing, the barrel nut that comes with this is very nice. And it's very robust and it's made for multiple, multiple uses. Everything went together seamlessly. I didn't bump into any problems with this at all. And it, it especially helped that the takedown pins were previously installed. Not that I don't have tools for that, but it really helped. Now, one tool that I just recently picked up, I bought it about a week or so ago, installed it on my bench right here, Real Avid Master Vice. This thing is freaking amazing. Like it does so many things. It has all these different inserts and has all these different places where you can hold a barrel at a certain angle and it will rotate. It has ways that you can lock it off. It has ways, it even has a clamp so that you can clamp it to the Picatinny mount of a handgun and hold that still. I'm not gonna go into too much detail on this. I'll just show you some cool like B-roll footage and stuff. It's amazing and it's 100% worth every penny. I will have a link to it down in the description as well as the other parts that we talked about in today's video. So be sure to check that out if you are interested in it. But that thing made the build so much easier than any other build that I've ever done. You know, in the past, I've actually built lower receivers just in my hand, on my desk, no vice nothing like that, not even having the proper roll pin punches. And I was able to pull it off without scratching it. So it is possible to do it without these tools, but man, having the right tools is 100% necessary. If you guys are interested in the courses, we're not gonna just talk about basics of uh, AR-15s and Glocks and stuff like that. I'm gonna go into a lot of detail, not just on how to in properly install parts, but you know, how to choose parts for your type of purpose and stuff like that. That'll all be on my online course, just in case you're interested. If you're not interested, hey, 
doesn't bother me at all. I just put it there for the people that want it and want to actually use it. So let me know in the comments what you guys think of this build. I didn't want to do a lot of colors on here because I know that people can be finicky about colors. You know, maybe if you did like say black and red or black and tan or black and silver, whatever the case is. I wanted it to be as universally liked aesthetically as possible. And that way, if the winner of it wants to change out and add some colorways to it in the future, they can do so. As soon as we hit a million subscribers, we will be drawing the winners for all of the different prizes. I wanted to say thank you also for always just helping me out, being there for me and subscribing to the channel. You guys have literally changed my life over these past six years on YouTube. But with that said, I love you. You guys stay sexy.